Okay, we're here to learn about the, a little bit about throwing the fin flyer, and the main thing I want to tell you folks is that it's all about throwing it straight. Straight, straight, straight. So we want to give the kids a focal point. If we're standing here like this, this is a good field because we have something at the end. I see the tops of those trees. I would tell the kids, look at the top of the trees. When they first pick it up, they're going to grab it like this. I want it to go through the groove in their palm like so. And then the fingers can go on like this. Or they can go on like this. Or if you got a kid with bigger hands, they can use the fork grip. Now, I've seen people use the fork grip. They go like this. They say, oh, this doesn't feel right. Well, of course it doesn't feel right. It's supposed to be in your palm like so. But the normal grip, the grip I'm going to recommend, first finger on like this and in the groove of the palm like that. And kind of, you got to kind of get a grip on it. You may spit on your hand. Uh, you know, it's a good way to keep somebody from sharing your javelin. But um, uh, so that's the way to hold it. Then they're going to hold it like this, pick it up like so, remove the crud. And notice I got my arm high. The javelin's flatter than you think. And I'm, I've got it kind of the tip so I can see it by my eye. That's a big deal. The other arm, the non-throwing arm, needs to be up like this. It's sort of, javelin's kind of an armpit event. So these are my armpits. You go like this. So uh, a way to practice for kids is just to have them walk like this, just walk like this. And uh, if you got a live kid who's pretty good, you tell them to open their, open their palm like this and balance it and take walking steps like this with it being balanced. That's the tricky part. But it helps them feel to have a really, really steady hand, which is important. So the tip by the eye, the tip and almost by the head. And when you're a good javelin thrower, you will have a smear of mud on the side of your head. It's just, it's a very normal thing. And they'll be afraid of it. They think they're going to stab themselves. Other end goes first. Um, and, uh, but they probably won't. So right like this is good, out here is not good. Okay, so I spend most, we put our arms down for now. Now you feel your arm gets kind of tired doing that. The, one of the issues for a lot of kids is at the beginning of the practice, they can go like this. At the end of the practice, they just can't do it. So um, that will stop. And then as the season goes on, they'll be able to hold their arms up. One of the drills that we do sometimes is to make them walk at the end of practice to walk 40 yards, arms up like this, and they just walk like this. It's easy for the first 10 yards. So, but it changes. Anyway, uh, that's a good thing to do. Then, when it comes to actually throwing it, I try to get people to balance on their right foot. For This is for right footers. So I tell them to tap, tap the left foot like this. Because what we can't have in javelin, we can't have them leaning forward like this. Then when they throw, they'll throw down, which is perfect for throwing to home plate. But that's not where we're throwing. We're throwing up that way. So you got to take the whole thing and tilt it back like this. Now you'll see kids doing this. Well, they'll get ready and you'll say, and they'll run up to throw and they'll start looking to the heavens and they don't know where they're going to throw. So again, I tell them, you see that tree? You got to throw it right at that tree. So get ready. Look at that tree. With each step, you must look at that tree. Then you must, as you throw it, roll into it, finish and point at that tree like this. And a drill sometimes is to stand and just go like this. Here, like this. OK. In Sweden, they call it spjut casting. It's like you're casting a fishing pole. It's like this long, sweeping movement. Now, people pick these things up and they go, oh, this is light. I could throw it real far. Well, they're thinking about throwing a rock at the beach. When you pick up a rock at the beach, how heavy is that rock? The one you pick up, you go, oh, man, I could really throw this. It weighs about 80 grams. I've weighed them. It weighs about 80 grams. This weighs 454 grams, 450 grams, about the same as a football. A 450 gram rock looks about like this. A 600 gram rock, which is the girl's javelin, 
it's about this big and an 800 gram rock is huge. No one would pick it up. So you can't throw it the way people are used to throwing it with a sudden acceleration. You can't do that. You have to haul it over a long distance and finish into the top. And what they usually do is they get to here, they look like a million bucks, and then they look like a buck 98 because they go like that, right? So you have to finish it through the flight line is a phrase that sometimes you use. Um, the run up. Everybody says, well, I can kind of throw it, but I can't do the run up. So a way that they teach the kids in Finland is to, with skip and skip and throw, where you go skip and skip and throw. All right. And that gives you the idea that when you land, bump, boom, you go into the throw like that. Because what we don't want is run up, stop and throw. The stop kills it. It's, I tell them it's like kicking a ball. If this is a ball right here where you're going to kick, no one, none of us would stop, then kick like that. Okay. Well, I hope none of us would, but you know, it could be, but even, even beginner kids will know that you kind of take a jump into it. Well, you do that in the javelin too. The hard part is to keep all that momentum from slamming you forward. So you have to try to have your right foot for right-handed thrower needs to land slightly ahead. I can't really do it because they don't have momentum. Slightly ahead of the center of gravity. Uh, um, I'm gonna, uh, I, I'm happy to collect your emails if you'd like and I can make, I can share with in my Dropbox folder the fin flyer in five minutes uh, video that I've created that shows a lot of this stuff with arrows and lines and graphics and things. But it's really important that they end up learning how to run with a little bit of a lean back like this and turn into the throw instead of what most of them do. They run up, they land and they pitch, which is why they call it pitching because you pitch forward. You can't do that in javelin. You have to try to acquire about a 10 degree lean back with your arm up and then make a very fast turn into the throw. And the left side needs to block. Now here's a problem that we have. Kids, you're going to be coaching. They're not going to have javelin shoes. I don't know, maybe they will. If, if, if they do, that's great. Then make sure the spikes are in good condition. When you're going to be doing all this, putting your left foot down like this to throw, you must have good traction or you will slip and it will be bad. And again, the analogy is kicking. If you run up to kick a ball and your foot slips, it's over. So anything you can think of, shoe like this even on this surface isn't too bad. Flats, like, like ten sneakers like that on wet grass, you don't, you don't have a chance. You can't, you really can't do it. So, so come up with something. I've taken wrestling shoes, drilled holes in them, put blind nuts in and clamped in with us with a washer. Uh, uh, you probably can do better than that. Okay. So let's, um, let me show you what the flights look like. What the big advantage to this implement, is it reveals the flights. So maybe some of you have experience with other uh, kid throwing implements that have fins on the end and they correct. Well, that's great when you're seven and it's your first day, but what, for real javelins, you need to have a non-correcting implement like you do with a Frisbee. Where you, want it, you want it to show you that it was a bad throw so that you correct it and then you make a good throw. Oh, perfect on the first one. Okay, <laughs> that was kind of lucky. So now I'll throw some bad ones. So what you want your kids to do is throw like that all the time. They won't. They're going to throw like this. They're going to have the points going to go up. Okay, so I threw the handle at the top of the trees, but, the, but that's under the javelin. So the correction when they make that mistake is to throw the next one instead of with the force going under, I want the force to go over.
it was it was incorrect this way and that's i tell you when they when they have a bad one try to get them to do it the opposite way right away this is a useful drill keeps the kids quiet for hours and is safe which is important well, they just throw like this oh perfect okay another one I practiced a lot okay so what usually happens is not that this is what you usually see okay and when they throw one like that try to throw the next one so it goes right on its point not quite as good as the first couple okay reading learning to read the flight is a huge thing once the kids learn to read the flights then they'll go oh i was under that one i'll throw the next one over then your job is kind of like simple so i don't that may disqualify some of your no i don't know anyway uh so i'm going to start at this point and i'm going to see how long five steps takes uh, you, I, there are many ways to do this this is one way, this happens to be the way I find to do it. Start like this and go one, two, three, four, five, and throw. So it looks like this. Back like this, look at the target, arms up, tap, tap, one, two, three, four, five, and throw. Now you can make seven or nine. It's okay, and you'll also see this. You'll see kids go, right? And that's just like someone who's gonna kick a ball, say the ball is here. It's exactly like somebody kind of doing this first before they kick. It's good. It means that they're getting a kind of a, a rhythm feeling. You don't wanna see one, two, three, four, five, throw with no rhythm little bit of bouncy rhythm Let's see I'll try it again tap tap one two three four five a little bit of bounce a little bit of rhythm this concludes our javelin training for today my name is Duncan Atwood thank you very much